again the kickoff, kickoff team, kickoff return team, five yards apart, situated at 35 and the 30. Cannot move until the ball is received. Ball received, that's Adrian Killens who does so. We have a kick return out to the 25 yard line and that's where we bring out the renegade starting quarterback from Ball State, Drew Plitt. Plitt said in our meetings this week, first time ever in football that he did not have tape to watch on an opponent week one. We expect more of a standard this week, Joey, because of the fact that there is tape now after week one. He of the completed 76% of his balls and said he wants to be more consistent in this game. I don't know if you can be more consistent than 76% in a football game. Split out of the shotgun on first down, looks left, throws left right away, has a receiver, and it's picked off. That's a Jane A. Harris. What did we say in the open? Defense carried these teams. It was intended for Nuwan Winningham. He couldn't get it over the defender. First play, we've got a turnover. It looked like a simple cover, too. Didn't read the corner, tried to squeeze it in between the corner and the safety. That's tough to do if you put the ball with too much air under it. As you can see, this ball just stays in the air a little too long. You got to drive this ball to hit that hole. And Harris right there, good high point of the ball and Plitt. Admittedly, he had an interception a week ago, said, look, I've got to clean up some of the bad throws. And right out of the gate, first play of the game, the ball turns over to Houston. Brandon Silver, their quarterback. Go. Uh -huh. Max Borgie, the running back off the right side. Check that Garrett Owens out of the backfield. Here we go, here we go. Ace right, ace right. Ace right. Blue stack. X on one. Ready? Ace right. Blue, blue, blue. Go. Hunt, hunt. Ball to 43 for Silvers. Pressure. Gets it away. Good shot to 13. John Trey Kirkland. He got pressure, gain of 17. Eric? I was talking with Emmanuel. He said defense is going to set the tone. How'd you just do that first play of the game? Man, we just out here trying to make plays and fly around, man. Uh, they tried me right there, man. Uh, our safety's got us in a good call right there. And shoot, I capitalized. You felt like they disrespected you. You had to let them know. Man, you feel me? Yeah. Big time, Matt. I should have slammed 12 ass. Let's go, three. That's why we popped that ball. Hunt, right, hunt. Right. Big play for the rough next. That's Borgie on the draw off the right side. And this offense, Wade Phillips wanted to let us know, the A.J. Smith, the offense coordinator, this is the Mike Leach offense is what they call their offense. Who knows that more than Borgie, who played for him at Washington State? Yeah, 41 State. touchdowns at Washington State, tied for first in school history. Three-time All-Pac-12. Expect him to be a big part of this offense. If he gave him a helmet sticker or two on college football Absolutely. final during his career. First appearance for Bryce in a lane. Go. Hunt, hunt. That lean didn't play a week ago. Silvers looks over the middle. Quick shot. Quick hit. John Trey Kirkland, the intended receiver, and Jamal Carter was there. Man-to-man -to -man coverage. If you want Kirkland to continue through there, run that think score and touchdown. Man-to-man, -to -man, you beat your guy, you're getting to the end zone. Here we go. Blue 15 on one. Ready? The viewer listens carefully. The microphone on Silvers is actually picking up the coordinator Smith in his helmet. So keep a listen for that as well. Go. Uh, hunt. Silvers looks right, throws right, miscommunication. Thought he was going back shoulder. Deontay Burnett kept running. Hawkins, Josh Hawkins on the coverage. third and six so Joey we're gonna have a field goal early on. Yeah Silver thought he, he, he would see a lot of cover two cover three some zone but so far the Renegades are playing man-to-man -man coverage some bump and run they're being aggressive in this game we'll see if Silvers can start to get on track with some of his, some of his receivers down the field. 42 yard attempt for Hunter Duplessis and that's three points and good for the Roughnecks. We should have gone. I had a pork chop last night that was, that was the size of Joey's head. And it was incredible. 
All right, so Killens at his five. Trying to make a man miss. Flag on the play. Almost certainly going to be a block in the back. So the out to the 24, and we got a flag. Third return, receiving team, number 81. Illegal block in the back. 10-yard penalty. First down, Arlington. Jeff Heaser, the head official tonight. So we came on saying Houston, four and a half point favorite. Correct. The point total, 39. Joey, there's a look how that's fair. Two and four against the one, two, four and one against the spread of the favorite. Yeah, you know, all the spreads in the first week were right around that three to maybe five area that lets you know how close these games were. And your, your people, the overs, four, two, and one. Have you ever bet an under in your life? I try my best to avoid it. All right. I like offense. See if Drew Plick can help you out here. Ball at the seven yard line to start this drive. Threw an interception on his first pass of the game. That's Davion Smith, the running back, and Tavante Beckett. The player Wade Phillips said is just a ball player and a loss of one. 11 personnel. 11 personnel. Let's go. Uh, one. One. See both coordinators. G, G4. G4. Jonathan G4. Hayes was, a, was the head coach of St. Louis the last time the XFL played, so he has a lot of experience in this league. Brian Stewart, also a defensive coordinator for Wade Phillips when they were with the Dallas Cowboys. Second and 11, Plitt Quick, Sal Canella, who led the team in receptions a week ago. Seven for 70 comes up with it. Gain of four tackled by Ellerby. That was good on good from a week ago. Emmanuel Ellerby led Houston in tackles with eight. Houston's playing a lot of man coverage. It's waiting to see when Arlington's going to take a shot to the outside, trying to make a big play versus bump and run man coverage. Third and six now for Arlington. Plitt trying to set up the screen, does so well. Looking for a block, that's gonna be a first down for the Renegades. That was Smith on the reception, and a gain of 12 brought down by Raleigh Tejada. Big Mike Horton, number 70, is out there looking for someone to block. This great play call, looked like it's gonna be a much bigger play. And guys, when you see that third and six, what do you think? Defensive ends, these guys had seven sacks last week. They're going to pin their ears back. Great call by the offensive coordinator. Let's get a screen. Let's get them running up the field, go right behind them. Eric, that's like barbecue for you big boys up Dude, front. you talked about brisket, cereal. Come on, we need to get that going. It's a good way to continue the drive for Plitt. He's going to look right. No one there. Fourth down in the pocket. He's going to be brought down a team last week that had numerous sacks in their win. And they get one early on here and a loss of four. I mean, it, it, Wade told us, Joey, their pass rush is where they're going to make. They've got a couple of guys that like Trent Harris, Tim Ward. We already saw Beckett get involved. Yeah, Trent well. Harris came in and cleaned it up at the end. But the move he threw off the line, the outside ducking back inside, could have got to the quarterback first. They're really good at rushing the passer. You can see if Plitt can continue getting the ball out of his hands quickly because we're not sure how long the offensive line can stop this rush in Houston. And Arlington looks as if they're going to use their first timeout. First charge timeout. Arlington. 30 seconds in length. So we know that we teased the Drew Plitt microphone to start the program. We are having issues with his microphone at the moment. When we get it fixed, you will hear everything he's saying with his coordinator there, John Hayes. But look, week two, Joey, I had mentioned at the outset, when you look at all the teams throughout the league, these two are the only ones that come into their second week game undefeated. You got Seattle, Vegas, they played last night. St. Louis, they're 2-0 uh, behind Anthony Beck. Uh, Orlando, they were on prior to us. Heinz Ward and San Antonio got their first win this afternoon. And it's the first week that these guys had a chance to get some film from last week's game. They didn't scrimmage. They don't have film on one another. So last week sort of filling each other out as they come to this week, finally some film to study to put together a game plan. Again, the top two teams from each division playing the semifinals, and then they will play for a championship. Plitt again pressured, Plitt again brought down. Tim Ward in a loss of one. Ward will get credit for this, but this was a covered sack. Plitt had enough time in the pocket. He has to realize, look, 
you got Tim Ward over there, you got Trent Harris over there. You have to get this ball out of your hands because these guys will be coming. You cannot outrun them. Already the players we have featured in terms of who to look out for defensively, they've all come up big on this one. Three plays for a loss on this drive alone. Now third and 15. Here comes the pressure. Here comes the sack. Plant again brought down. And Brian Stewart has to love his defensive unit. And a loss of six. That was Emmanuel Ellerby. As a receiver, this is the time I come to the sideline and say to my quarterback, say to my offense coordinator, hey, look, take one step and throw the ball down the field. They're playing bump and run man to man. They're bringing pressure. That's a chance to make the big plays on the outside. Let's make them pay for playing man to man. Marquette King had himself a nice NFL career. Set the punt for the Renegades. William Likely deep to receive. Likely situated at his 50. Takes it across the 40. Likely cuts back. Likely has space. Likely's got clearance. There's a flag on the play for now. Punt of 41 and a return of 50. Yes, 85. Remember, the kicking team was in downfield early. Number 85, that five yard penalty to add on the other scrum. First down. Big play on special teams early, Joe. Yeah, and you hate to see a flag down on special teams. But I think the way they do it now, it, it will take away some of that. But again, a low punt for a punt returner is absolutely perfect. That's what you want to see. Gives you the chance to get the ball in your hands. We can't ever have a guy outside. We guys got to do some work with Dave. Bob Stoops clearly not happy with it. Brandon Silvers in Houston getting great field position now. Ball spotted at the five. Go. Silvers in the middle, wide open. Boom. Touchdown, Houston. Nick Holly, a member of this team back in 2020, first touchdown of the night. And again, in the XFL, one foot only. They adopt the college rule on that one, Joey. Yeah, and I think a lot of people watching this game will sort of pick up these rules as we move forward. Looking for the two feet at times, it's just one. I love the rule. Another unique aspect. You get no kicking extra points. You get a one point from the two, a two point from the five, and a three point from the Go. ten. Houston going for two. Hunt, hunt. Fake to Borgie. Silvers keeps it. Throws it back. Tipped. Caught. Two points. Good. Nikali, 5'10, my style. Killens, deep. And immediately swallowed up by the Houston special teams. You talked about the touchdown and what Holly was able to do. Yeah, watch Holly extends completely, grabs this ball at the air, gets the one foot down. Now, had this been two feet, I don't know that that would count. Made it a little tougher than it had to be, and then, Matt, that looks like something you would do. You looks like me? your dance moves. You'll see him next week in Vegas. I'm going to see your dance moves in Vegas? Yeah. So what else are you going to do in Vegas? Man, Actually, there's a lot. You do yeah, I hope not. So can Plitt in this offense get something going? Had the big screen on third down last time, but they couldn't get him any protection. Ball to 25, first down, no room for Smith. There's a flag on the play. Sean Davis on the tackle. Holding offense, number 70. 10-yard penalty, first down. Joey, in terms of starts for, for Arlington's offense, you can't ask for a much worse beginning for how they wanted to get this thing Yeah, started. and I was thinking about the other side if you're Houston. This is perfect. You have a lead, the way you play defense, and you're keeping them behind the chains. Now they have a first and 20, and you have a defense that gets after the quarterback. 
look, pressure on Plitt. Remember last week, they were down 14 to three. Had to come back because of the defense. That's Canella off to the outside. Again, Canella seems to be Plitt's guy. Tejada on the tackle in a gain of eight. A few years ago, when we used to go on the road to go to visit colleges when we were practicing in the spring, I went to Auburn. I see a long haired, big athletic guy running around catching passes. I immediately said, Who's the big fella? It was Canella. He is a Check tre that. tremendous uh, athlete. Gun double right, street jet, F shallow cross. He has since founded a clothing line. See if we can't get Joey a little swag bag from the Canella clothing line. Second and 12, Plitt again, pressure, just has to throw that in the dirt. And now you're talking about it, Joey. John Hayes, offensive coordinator, he's going to have to adjust for this pressure. That brought on by Trayvon Mason. And one of the adjustments that they tried uh, to make in this. Let's go gun, pit, chip, 725, deep outs, back slap. One of the adjustments, they brought in two tight ends in this set. And usually teams do that to try to help with protection. It hasn't worked out yet. Now third and long, you heard him call deep outs. Line's going to have to hold up here to convert. Pressure backs off. Plit outside. It was intended for Tyler Vaughn's ruled incomplete. Vaughn's has to come back downfield at a sharper angle and help his quarterback out. This is a pretty good throw by Plitt. He'll ask his receiver, come further downfield and come back toward the ball. Looking at this high end zone shot. By the time he gets control, he's already out of bounds. Good call, good ruling of incomplete. That's the voice of Dean Blandino, VP of officiating. But likely last punt returned 42 yards off the foot of Marquette King. Punt of 35 by King. Brandon Silvers in this offense humming early. Let's take a listen to the quarterback. They can't do nothing about it. They watch our practice every day. They're not stopping us. They are not stopping us. Keep doing us. Yeah, that one's for you, Mark. That one's for you, Mark. Man, we at the 45 already. Go. Oh, uh, hut. Ball to 40. And that's a player that they said have some pop. Bryce and Aline did not Bryce play last Aline. week. A quick scat back and a gain of seven. Udayowi on the tackle, helped by Sankey. Cook Phillips excited to have him back too. Didn't you mention didn't play? They're excited to have him back in this game for his big playability. We've seen Cole McDonald get some snaps at quarterback, kind of running that wildcat type offense. Borgie still in the backfield. There he is, taking the ball, fakes off the right side, and a gain of two. <laughs> McDonald, a big kid. 6'3", 212 from Hawaii. Seventh round pick of the Titans. McDonald remains at quarterback, and now second charge timeout. Arlington. Bob Stoops a little confused of what happened there. Here's McDonald mentioned. He gets a look out here, Joey. He's one of those dual threat guys they like used as a running back. And McDonald's a big kid, 6'3", 212. And it is a tough ask to have a kid standing on the sideline. And all of a sudden, hey, go in there and run the football. But McDonald does it well. Uses this opportunity in this offense to vary it up a little bit. We didn't see it. I, I mentioned A.J. Smith in this, this Mike Leach offense. Leach wasn't known for quarterbacks who could run the ball, but that's a kind of nice little twist that A.J.'s got on this thing to use his abilities the best that he's got. Yeah, and it just gives a defense a different look. Send in a different guy, 
give your defensive line something else to look at, something else to chase, and then get back to what you want to do, which is throwing the ball quickly. McDonald still in there on third and short. Arlington already down two timeouts here in the first quarter. Borgie in the backfield. That's Borgie up the middle, and that'll be a first down for Houston. 8 Eastern ESPN 2. Uh -huh. Another give to Borgie up the middle for a game or two. Officially, they're going to give him three. Borgie's one of those guys, Joe. As college football fans as we are, we're very heavily involved in that sport in the fall. He was so fun to watch when he was at Washington State. Especially in this offense. You mentioned the Leach offense. He understands it well, and he's huge for these guys. Oh, yeah, well. Running the ball and catching it out of the backfield. Uh -huh. Silver's off his back foot, intended for Holly, just overextends him. That's where the 5'10 receiver probably needed to be around 5'11, 6 feet. And I'm expecting to see something out of Justin Smith outside. You mentioned guys not playing last week. Justin Smith, receiver, their fastest guy. He's to the outside. They're playing bump and run man to man. Now, I understand quarterbacks feel more comfortable right around the hashes, but I would take a shot outside and see if Smith can make a play. Easy. Hey, white, white, white. Hey, blue, 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 blue. Go. Uh -huh. Third and seven, Arlington can use a stop. Silver's going to take a shot. There's Smith. Joey just talked about him. And it's incomplete. Wade Phillips told us of Smith. Watch out for him. They tried to hook up on a deep play. Evans, Darren Evans out of LSU on the cover. And Coach was so excited to have Smith he back. Was. And that's the first time they took that shot. They didn't practice a lot. Smith was hurt the first week. It may take some time to get on the same page with Silvers, but expect to see a couple more shots in this game. Good stop for Arlington. Race Porter on the punt. Joe Powell deep to receive. Powell elected to let that go to see if he could get it out of bounds because of the unique punt rule in a punt of 40. How about the Roughnecks defense, Joe? We touched on them in the open. They have not disappointed. No, they made a great statement in week one, holding Orlando to 12 points, getting the seven sacks. And in this game, early on, getting after the quarterback, this is a covered sack. But you can see these defensive ends, they get to the quarterback. Ball spotted just below the six-yard line. Keith Ford, first appearance for Arlington tonight. And Bob Stoops. This one was out of bounds. We made legal touch the ball. Yeah, that means that we get it. Instead of back on a five. <laughs> and he, his foot was on the line, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Arlington is challenging the ruling on the field, indicating the receiver was out of bounds when he touched the ball. The play is under further review. Eric. Coach, you said you wanted to set the tone defensively. Guys are playing out of their minds right now. Yeah, we're playing well. We're playing roughneck football. You know, that's the, that's the way we expect to play. It seems to be a little bit of pressure up the middle and just letting your guys hunt on the outside as well. Yeah, those outside guys are really tough to block. <laughs> so. I'm glad I don't have to do it. There you go. <laughs> and they're charged. In... Correct, correct. The ruling on the field is confirmed. The receiver did not. Step out of bounds and touch the ball. Arlington no longer has a challenge for the remainder of the game. This was their third and final timeout of the half. Let's bring in Dean Blandino, VP of officiating. Dean, walk us through what that challenge was and what, what went on to it. Yeah, since the, the XFL rule is unique where a punt that goes out of bounds inside the opponent's 35-yard line comes out to the 35, Coach Stoops took a shot, tried to challenge that it was touched prior to or actually after he stepped out of bounds we had a good look that showed that it wasn't and the ruling on the field was confirmed dean thank you one of the great things is of our xfl access keith ford by the way still running the football 
It looked as if Houston had him down. I'd imagine Dean's going to have to take another look at this one because we're sitting here breaking down the replay. Again, this is the NFL rule, the down by contact. Yeah, he's still up. That's heady work out of Keith Ford. What an athletic play to stay up in that situation. Yeah. He almost cost himself a safety. But he was on bodies. Good job. Good whistle control. Good whistle control. So initially went from a loss in one to a gain of three. A wild sequence there. Adrian Killens, the running back. Keith Ford, an interesting story. He's a five-star running back at the city of Cyprus. Number three running back in the country. Committed and played for Bob Stoops at Oklahoma. Later transferred to Texas A&M. We talked to Coach Stoops about the transfer and everything that went on. He said, look, I'm glad he's playing for me again. Yeah, and he said things happen. Things happen between players and coaches, and there's reasons that guys go other places. And you forget about it, you move on. And now they're back together playing football. How about it, too, in the day and age of the transfer portal in college, talking about how foreign transfers were back when. So a third and five for Plitt. Quick shot, settled down, find Brandon Arcanado, and that's going to be a first down, and two flags come in. William likely the defender and likely a face mask. And the run. Yep, that fits the kind of run, yep. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number four. four. 50 yard yard pound at the New Orleans. First down. That's why you saw two flags. I mean, that, <laughs> that is about as clean of a face mask as you can possibly get. Under 30 seconds here in the first quarter. Like Arlington right now, with how their offense is struggling out of the gate, you can use penalties and things of that nature to kind of jumpstart a drive. Trips to the top of your screen, bunch formation, Killens off the right side. He's got some speed. He tries to get to the corner. That's a good gain on first down. Tejada knocks him out after a gain of eight, and that'll do it in the first quarter. Hoping his offense can get a little something going here to start the second quarter. Plitt under center, Keith Ford in the backfield. That's going to be Ford up the middle trying to get some sort of crease. <laughs> Be enough for a first down. It was wait for the official mark, but he was able to bang it up in there. And I think you can tell by the play calls and the personnel in the game right now for Arlington. Uh, John Hayes doesn't feel real comfortable with their ability to protect the quarterback. So they're bringing their formations tighter. They're trying to run the football. As a receiver, I would love to see you spread it. And let's take a shot and see if their corners can cover. So there's Plitt. Most time he's had all night went back shoulder. That's a good throw and catch by Lawan Winningham. They ruled it incomplete. Tejada on the coverage. And again, but you have to do this. Whoa. We might have to get Dean Blandino to take a look at this one. out of bounds. Remember that, that whole... Okay, let's take... All right, stop game, stop game, command center. We're going to take an extra look at this. I want to see that program for each shot. Jeff, we're just looking at the foot at the sideline. See that? I've got the heel there. It looks like a toe heel with the heel coming down out of bounds. Take one more look at it. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Take one more look at this. It's tough to tell if he's on. The toe's definitely in, but the heel looks like it comes out of the white. He's in at the white. All right, Jeff, we're going to let the ruling on the field stand. Incomplete pass. Ruling on the field for an incomplete pass. Stands as called. Second down. Down to Tiffany. Hey, guys, I'm with Coach Stoops. Say, hey, Coach Stoops, they've been putting a lot of pressure on your offense. How do you guys find a way to combat well, we that? we got to be able to run the football a little bit and complete a pass. We just got to get some guys we 
We had AK down the middle for a touchdown, but we threw it outside and it's out of bounds. So we got to complete some balls. Thanks, Coach. Talked about running the ball. There's Ford off the right side. See if he can't get anything going. Any positive yardage right now, Joey, is a good thing for this offense. That's just two. Daka and Wheeland on the tackle for Houston. There's a lot of guys on that on that line of scrimmage for Houston. Wristband. Uh, no, fuck, Chuck. Let's go. Uh, wristband 40. Wristband 40. It's all access during a football game. Third and eight. <laughs> That's what it is. Plant. Pressure. Plitt nearly intercepted. That ball tipped and hung in the air as Tavante Beckett with the tip. And so a drive where the Renegades had a little bit go is going to stall out for a punt. As if he was just going to let that go, I know it's hard to think about that in that moment. That's a pick and a lot of yardage there. His teammate was right there screaming for the ball, but he made a good play regardless. And Joey, during our meetings with, with Stoops, that's likely from his 10. Had a big return earlier. He's active with the ball's on the turf. Can Arlington recover? They do. Sal Canella. The tight end was able to come up with it. Luan Winningham, the receiver. This is a league. You're going to play offense, defense, and special teams. Winningham forced the fumble. And it was Canella that gives the Renegades some life. This might be the spark that Arlington needs. They've had trouble throwing the ball. They've had trouble protecting the quarterback. In this area of the field, expect them to stay, calm, stay compact once again and see if they can move the ball running. It's the first play for them in Houston territory. Complete take advantage. Dumps it over the middle. Incomplete intended for Smith. Beckett was there. Plitt doesn't seem comfortable he does. in the pocket. There are some looks, especially in this man-to-man -man coverage, where he can take some shots a little further down the field. Just doesn't feel comfortable with what he's looking at. Moving defenders, guys in his face. And when you get pressure on a quarterback consistently in a game, they can't get comfortable. And at times, they're not seeing the coverage the way they should. And Joe, I was going to say, during the punt, during our meeting with Stoops, he said Kyle Sloter was right there in this quarterback competition. And you wonder if Plitt can't get anything going here with the good field position if Stoops didn't think about making a change here after a gain of one because it just hasn't been good for Plitt. Not to say it's all him, yeah. but maybe a, a quarterback change gives him a spark. I think we're starting to see some of the coverages confusing Plitt. A lot of times it's man-to-man -man coverage on the back end, but there is a safety in the middle of the field that you have to negotiate. So third and nine. Ball at the 22. Plitt forced out of the pocket. He's got space. Drew Plitt going to do it with his feet in a first down brought down by Tim Ward after a gain of 12. And this is a huge play for Arlington just to slow down that pass rush. Those defensive ends, Harris, Ward, come wide. They come up the field. If you can get something up this middle, at least it makes them respect you and rush with the idea of you may leave the pocket. So first and goal now. Again, the turnover spurned this drive. Ball at the 10, just inside the 10 to make it first and goal. And there's Smith in the inside, brought down by Ward. Joey, if we've learned anything in our first week of the XFL, and even Arlington down 14-3 a week ago, no deficit, same amount, 11 points again. There's no deficit too big in this league because of the scoring system. And it has looked like Houston has dominated this game. It's only 11 to nothing, which in this league is a one-score game. By the way, so they hey, can get this all in one position. You score and go two, it's 11-8 just like that. Empty backfield for Plitt with Smith spread out. He's going to move back into the backfield now. That's two out of the backfield. Smith. A good play by Hendy after a gain of two. Hendy makes the first contact for Houston. So now third and goal. Bile. Nickel G. Bile. 
Hey, red, red bow, red bow. Crush rush. Tell him crush rush. Tell him crush rush. Flint back to his right, over the middle, touchdown Renegades. Lawan Winningham, who forced the fumble on the punt, gets the payoff with the touchdown. And you see Bob Stoops put up the two middle. points. Two, two, two. Two-point conversion time. Good answer by the Renegades. Yeah, and, and now we have a game. Now it's back to feeling like a game. Arlington gets the turnover, and they put one in the end zone. It was dead on their sideline, and now they have life. Again, if you're just new to the XFL world, we do not kick extra points. You get an opportunity for a one-point decision from the two, a two-point from the five, a three-point from the ten. Once you make the decision, it's locked in. You can't change your mind last minute. Bob Stoops is analytically the two points as successful as the one point. We'll see what they do here. Plitt, read option, shovel over the middle to Canella. He can't get his yeah. feet going. A good job by Houston to keep it 11-6. Taylor Russelino's kick. Caught by Lee. Coverage can begin. And Lee keeps it shy of the 20. You see, Tepper's flaring in this one early on the field. Kind of an interesting story this week, Joey, because of the way the XFL hub is set up. Both Arlington and Houston, they work out, practice, eat at the same facility. They were with each other all week, which is awkward come game week down to Tiffany. I'm with Luan Whittingham. You forced the fumble that leads to you scoring the first touchdown for the Renegades. How were you able to dig deep and give your team a spark? Uh, I like to play football. I don't like to lose games. I seen we needed a play made, and who else going to make it? If you see a play need to be made, go make a play. That's how I feel. Go make some more. Thanks, Luan. That's exactly right. You saw him make the play on special teams, and he scored the touchdown. That was Borgie for a gain of eight. Like you're talking, I couldn't imagine playing against a team <laughs> that I'm eating lunch with, working out with in the weight room, seeing every single day. Those corners, we'd be talking trash the entire week. Silvers said it was awkward. And that's uh. being kind. He said everybody was kind of in there. Lunch was quiet. He's friends with the other quarterback, so they were having a little bit of fun, bringing up third and three, loss of one. <laughs> Joey, I find that shocking that you would be mouthing off to the corners in the lunchroom. What else would you do? Like, you're there with them every single day. Break bread with them. Be a yeah, friend. And talk trash. So that pass intended for Deontay Burnett. Josh Hawkins, great coverage. And Joey, just like that, just back like that. to back stops for the Renegades defense. They're going to get the ball back. With an offense that just found a way to move the ball 25 yards and put the ball in the end zone, which is going to give them momentum and confidence that they can move the football. So Duplis is going to punt the deep. Killen standing at his own 28-yard line. Catch the ball. Oh, it's you. It drives me nuts. One of the best-looking athletes I've ever seen on the defensive side. So each week, pass incomplete. Harris on the breakup. I said at the beginning of the year, as a Galloway played in the NFL for 16 seasons, I guarantee he's got a connection to someone on every team because of it. We're 2-0. and oh. Each team, he's 4-4. Four for four. Yeah, I'd imagine that's going to continue to happen. <laughs> and every time before the game, we go down there and there's coaches coming over. Hey, remember me? We went against you years ago. Had well, it last week. A couple years ago. Ricky Prohl was a good one. Bruce Gradkowski was a good one. to give to Smith off the left side for a gain of four. Judging by the play calls of John Hayes, offensive coordinator for Arlington, he doesn't have a lot of confidence in the receivers out Let's wide go. right now. There's a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. Right, F -yo -yo, 83 Y Hank. Got 
And Hank is typically a hook route. Sounds like by the tight end on the inside. And again, these shots they're not yeah. taking to the outside to these receivers versus man-to-man -man coverage makes me think they don't have a lot of confidence that their receivers can create right. separation. Third down for Plitt. Just missed throws, miscommunication or something to Tyler Vaughn. He broke in. Pass went right. That's a fourth down now for Arlington. So Drew Plitt trying to get on the same page with his offense. It just had, aside from that one turnover and touchdown, Joey, it just not has been easy, easy going, is likely back to receive the King punt. King's got a big leg, drives likely back to his 12, but that gives him space. We see likely has got big game speed. The ball is on the turf again. Arlington recovers again. Second time, Likely's had a crease. We got a flag. We got a flag on the play, and it was Winningham again that forced the fumble. That penalty's declined because the kicking team recovered. Okay, 20. Holding, receiving team. That penalty's declined. Results of the play is a fumble recovered by Arlington. First down. Got a Tiffany. The hold was on number 21. You force another fumble. How were you able to do it? Make a play again. Make a play again. Kevin yelled at me, go make another one. I had to make another one. How do you have such a knack for the ball? I play receiver. I like getting the ball. If it's not with me, I'm going to go get it. And I'm just trying to breathe right now. <laughs> get your breath well earned, guys. I mean, I got Winningham for an early helmet sticker. Ball to 40, trying to get the Renegades going. Plitt under center. Play fake. Will this be the shot they need? Wide open is Canella, who continues to be the leading receiver for the Renegades in a big play and a gain of 25. You can see from the tight, from the tight formation, Plitt had time in the pocket that time. Drop back, play action pass, hitting the Canella coming across the field. This is what they need protection-wise. Two tight ends, everyone inside, play action pass. Give the defensive line something else to look at, and it gives your quarterback Plitt time in the pocket to deliver down the field. One of the longest plays of the season, and it continues to be the Sal Canella show as it was a week ago. And again, look how this sets up. A turnover, momentum, now moving the ball. You heard the scream for holding as Plitt took a shot for Vaughn's tackled or on the coverage Harris, and it falls incomplete. <laughs> Are you trying to say as a pass interference? On the, on the tackle back there. But Vaughn's has to sell it a little better than that. Yeah. You know what I mean? He he has to make the official call something. Like anything, we get the fucking ball back. That's Ford off the left side. Brought down by Brewer after a gain of one. And Joey, at this point, even if they're held to a field goal, positive points off turnovers to make this thing 11-9 late second quarter. Based on how this half has gone offensively, and let me be clear about this offensive performance right hey, now. Arlington. Samuel Wink one, alert the zebra call. Samuel Wink one, Samuel Wink one, Samuel Wink one. So third and nine, Plitt, Canella, Canella, corner, touchdown Arlington. Check that, Nate Becker in the end zone for the Renegades. I want to. And Joey, it's the tight ends that have come up big after another Winningham forced fumble. Really good linebackers on this Houston team, and I believe Arlington blinks that they can beat their linebackers in man-to-man -man coverage against some athletic tight ends, Canelo being their main tight end. But you're, they're seeing that they can go from inside in these tight formations, finding other guys out wide. Here comes the two-point conversion. They've, re they've taken the lead, 12-11 at one point, down 11-0. 
plant. Just chucks it to the end zone. How about it? Tyler Vaughn's is there. You blink, and it's 14-11. Arlington comes back to take the lead. There was a big time hold on the inside. This might be an area where I might think, eh, let me challenge this. Want to ask Dean about it? You can, you have that power, Joey. Well, they're not going to challenge, so. Uh, uh, do you just want to be right, Dean's, though? Dean's chilling. Play, tossing touchdowns. What did you see on that play? Just having fun. TV got open on the end. Nate got open on the uh, flat. Just having fun out here making plays. Thanks, Drew. So, you know, we were talking, Joey, about the offense. Arlington's now outgained Houston. I mean, it's 86 to 48, but Houston's offense disappeared. The tight ends, Canella, Becker have been big. The two-point conversion, the special teams turnovers. This game flipped in a hurry. Completely flipped on both sides of the ball, and it started with turnovers. Arlington cre creating the two turnovers and special teams. Lee at his three. Lee with some space. Lee takes it just shy of the 35-yard line. Saturday night, don't miss UFC 285. Another stacked card, two title fights. How about the long-awaited return of John Jones? He takes on Ciro Gunn. Main card begins 10 Eastern pay-per-view. Preland 8 Eastern on ESPN. ESPN Deportes and ESPN Plus. To order the main card in English and Spanish, go to ESPNplus.com slash PPV. Houston just three plays in the second quarter. Silver's pass incomplete. That was intended for Borgie. If you had mute Houston minus the points, was well, a four and a half early on, you're feeling really good about that number. And now, if you took Arlington plus that four and a half, things are in your favor. Go. Hunt. Silver's quick shot over the middle. That was a good job by him. Pressure to get it off. Borgie not initially down, wise to get up. Payne then touches him at a gain of 12. How about listening to these pads popping as Silvers just stands in there, see it coming in his face, gets the ball out of his hands as he takes the big hit. Aaron Adeoe on the pressure. Go. <laughs> Looks for Borgie again, incomplete. That's Donald Payne. Bob Stoops called him a pleasant surprise last week. Makes the play there, now second and 10. Again, in the XFL, clock still continues to run on an incomplete pass ahead of the two-minute warning. I guess, yeah. Go. Blitz is on. Silver's hit. Throws it downfield. Should have been intercepted by Joe Powell. And that was Taylor made for a pick after the Donald Payne pressure. And that'll bring us to the two minute warning. Right now, if you took the point total, the over, the combined points 25, feeling pretty good at 39. Silvers just took a shot, stood in there to Kirkland. There goes Kirkland inside the 15, brought down by Payne. And Silvers has done this a number of times now, especially in this second quarter. Stand in there, take the hit in the face, and get the ball out. Tempo, quick shot to Burnett. And Burnett may have coughed the ball up. That's Josh Hawkins on the recovery. This is going to be a big play here in the first half. Ruling on the field is a fumble and recovered in return. 
player was not touched. Recovered by the defense. First down, Arlington. So Dean Blandino is going to be taking a look at this. This could elbows up, bodies up. Only thing I'm wondering is that defender out of bounds when he recovers it. See his left foot. Jeff, we're we're looking at it, Jeff. Fumble is clear. We're just looking at the recovery. I think that foot's in. His hand is on the body. You see his hand on the body? So I don't have a hand. The left foot, what about that back foot? See his back foot though? The defender's back foot. See back there? No, but if he's out of bounds and doesn't reestablish, but I've got it up. Jeff, we're good. We're gonna clear it. We're gonna clear with the fumble and the recovery by the defender. All stands. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Arlington. So, Dean, you were looking at that heel specifically prior to the recovery. That was the difference in the call, correct? Yeah, there were a couple of things. A, was it a fumble? Then the recovery was the defender out of bounds because if he's out of bounds and doesn't reestablish and touches the football, that would put the ball out of bounds. Awesome work there. Good access to how it went into that play. And Joey, I mean, this was bang bang on the sidelines. Houston looks like they're getting ready to run it in inside the two minute uh, two minute uh, warning. And Josh Hawkins is right there to force it and recover it. And this is why when you talk to coaches, the first thing they say is take care of the football. This game felt like Houston was dominating in the first quarter. Now they've turned it over three times, and Arlington's winning and has all the momentum. No timeouts <laughs> remaining. Second and three for Plitt over the middle to Smith. That'll be a first down. They're going to have to start moving, though, because they don't have any timeouts remaining. I know. I know. Yeah, show me. Access is everything. I mean, this the turn of events here in the first half, we had talked about it. Three fumbles lost, two of them on special teams that completely flipped the dynamic of this game as Plitt tries to get away from the pressure. Picked up a gain of two, clock under a minute. You can also tell that Arlington's doing a much better job of protecting Plitt in the pocket. Play action passes, bringing guys in tight, and now he has time to stand back there and look downfield to complete some passes. That's Mike Horton. Played his college ball at Auburn. Spent time with Carolina. He's down on the play. You know, we had talked about the entertainment value of this league because things can change so quickly. And Houston last week, they were dominant from start to finish. Scored the most points, allowed the least amount of points. Wade Phillips talked about a complete performance out of week one. Whereas Bob Stoops, his team had to come back. They were down 14-3 a week ago, needed defense to kind of jumpstart things. And we've seen a very similar storyline in this first half. Yeah, and Houston came into this game a four and a half point favorite, which is a pretty big number after that first week of football because they were so dominant on the defensive side. And you can see how turnovers have completely flipped this game. You had mentioned Houston only had three offensive plays in that second quarter, late in the second quarter, because they've turned the ball over. There's the three fumbles, two of them caused by Winningham on special teams of likely, and that a big defensive play there by Hawkins. Also with the injury to Horton, it's a 10 second runoff. So from 48 to 38, again, Renegades, no timeouts remaining. It's going to be a flag on the play after Plitt threw the ball. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 47. High hit to the quarterback. 
15-yard penalty so from the got, previous spot. The right. First down. Clock will start on the snap. Man, that's a tough call. Just make a note of that. You got that. Yep. Dean, Dean, why the flag there? So the referee called high hit. He's got contact with the right shoulder, forcible contact to the head neck area. That's what the referee's calling. It was close. Looked like the contact might have been up in that neck area. Dean, can you overrule that without a challenge? That would be a coach's challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to go out. Right, so Boy, call stands on, first and ten. <laughs> <laughs> That's Canella. This could be this gonna yeah. eat some clock. Go <laughs> no gain, handy on the tackle. I don't know why Dean can't overrule that. Because I mean honestly. He's the VP of it's, it's, there, it's not a good call. All right. Well, it's clear. Take it up with the league overrule office. It. Take it up with the league office. I'll go over there to Dean's booth in a minute. <laughs> Come on, Dean, jump in there and overrule that one. Even though it's inside two minutes. Well, it has to be clear. It has to be clear and obvious that it's incorrect for me to correct that. Okay. And that shot, the shoulder is up around the neck area, and that that's why hey, if the coach wants to challenge that, but for me to fix it, it's got to be obvious. Had the coach challenged it, would you have over, overturned it? I'll tell you after the game. We got we got a we got <laughs> game game going on here, Joey. We know what that means. <laughs> that's exactly right. It means shut up, Joey. Yeah, it means we got six seconds left. <laughs> Dean, think about it. <laughs> So incomplete pass, fourth and 11. Rusolino is going to be on for a 55-yard field goal. He holds the XFL record for a 58-yard field goal with St. Louis in 2020. We saw him in warm-ups. With this win, this is going to be a heck of a kick. That's going to be short yeah. by a lot. That's how we'll go to the half. Yeah, he's excited to be coaching this team, and that's what you want in the XFL. You want guys with the experience of a Wade Phillips teaching these young men what it means to get a shot and another chance. If you ever have a chance of getting back to the NFL, having being coached by a guy like Wade oh, Phillips, perfect. That's going to be a bad That penalty. one is going to hurt you. For Russellini, that is the XFL kickoff rule. If it goes out of bounds, the ball gets spotted. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team all the way at Bobby the plays 15 yards 45 the yard line. On the previous kick, first down. And that's the opponent's 45 yard Yeah, line. that's the plus yeah, 45 this, yard This line. is a 45 yard That line. one hurts. That, I mean, and, and Dean, this is put into place to encourage kickoff returns, which is why it's so penal. That's such a significant. All right, Dean, thank you. We'll have check in with you there in the second half. Now we'll see it come to action here. Silvers with the ball early. Going to be incomplete or complete for two. That's Cedric Bird. Silver's had Burnett in the middle of the field wide open. I think he's just not seeing it clearly right now. What coverage is happening on the back end? Here we go, here we go. Hey, trip right up. Red, Duke, hold on, ready? Let's go. Probably like, caught him like, this was like halfway out. Za, za, hit. Go. Oh, hut. Taking a shot. His receiver broke in. Incomplete. Cover one, let's go. Okay, here we go. Hey, give me let's turbo, go. turbo, give me uh, there. Frisco, odd, west, white. Give me trip, Frisco, right. Frisco, odd, trip west, right. white. Okay. Well, dog. First trip, right. Well, dog. Frisco, hey, odd, well. west, white. Well, well. 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 Hey, that's yeah. the type of equipment manager I want. Yeah, no. Well. On the air. Go. Hut, hut. Big third down early in this one. He just has to throw it away. Pressure by Hill. And what's really interesting, guys, there is we know it's a screen. He knows there's Punch pressure shot. coming, Punch and he's just shot. totally blind to where it's coming from. There had no chance. I'm right here on the field and see it. I mean, he, he was totally blind there, Joey. It seems if Silvers has now, especially in the second quarter and including this drive, 
really isn't seeing where the pressure is coming from, isn't seeing what the coverage is on the back end. Something's off. Whistles blow before the snap. We've been in. We should have a delay again. That play clock again. We should have a delay yes. again. Yes. Delay a game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Eric. So offense just struggling a little bit, my man. What are you seeing on the field? How can you get things going? Yeah, man. We just got to get a couple plays here and there, and uh, you know, be on the right track, and you know. It's only our second game. We just got to get things going. Do you feel like it's you're a first down away from exploding? I mean, what, what's the biggest issue? Yeah, we got to get a first down and get the chains rolling. Um, other than that, we just got to complete passes, you know, not turn over the ball. And, you know, we're only down by three, and we have three turnovers. So, you know, we'll be fine. I appreciate you, brother. It's Porter's punt. Joe Powell, fair catch at his 10. And a punt of 38. And here comes Drew Plitt. Kind of a tale of two quarters for him and the Renegades. Now with the lead, 14-11. Their first possession here in the third quarter. to start deep in his own territory out of the shotgun. Smith in the backfield. That's Smith off the left side. That is a good chunk. Flag on the play, however. And Joey might finally get the holding call he's wanted after yeah, a game of 24. It, it, it's happened a couple times. Flag spot is good. Holding offense number 68. Penalty's half to the goal. First down. And that, I mean, guys, that's just tough when, when you're thinking that your running back's going one way, it's an inside zone, and then he bounces outside. Defender reacts, you get caught on the outside of it. I know we've seen a lot that were more egregious, but that's the right call right there, no question. Eric, are you making an excuse for offensive linemen it's to exactly hold? exactly what Joey, he's doing. Let me that just tell you something. I've like heard you excuse. calling up, holding up there. I've almost made my way up there <laughs> twice <laughs> to correct you. You don't do that, all right? Get your hands inside his shoulders. <laughs> Joey's picked on the offensive linemen, the punt returners, the Dean, receivers, Dean. Dean Landino. Plitt tipped incomplete. <laughs> But it will give Arlington's offensive line a lot of credit. They have, in the second quarter, done a really nice job of protecting Plitt. That was Mason who got his paw on the football. Eric sent me a text and told me I better say something nice about the offensive line. So I will say that Arlington's offensive line is doing a nice job in the second quarter. Yeah, they, had the, this drive. they had those three early sacks. They haven't had any since. Second and 15. Again, they're pushed back because of the holding penalty. Trying to get something going is Smith. Gain of two, Mason and Harris on the combo. Let's do this. Let's go, gun, gun triple left, tight, three jet, halfback ram, all go X Reno. 11 personnel. Joey, did you? That is a lot of play calls. So it's going to be three streaks with the with the X coming underneath on the under route. They're hoping to clear out the entire side and bring the X underneath and catch it at five yards and get upfield for a big play. So they want yak out of this. Yes, that's what we're looking for. Third and 13, screen out of the backfield. Smith bounces off one player, tries to stay up. It's going to be really close there on third and long. Tejada brought him down. And we're talking probably about six inches short. Ellerby missed the early tackle. That'll force a punt. He's done challenging. TV wants the break after the punt. So King to punt. We saw likely with fumble issues, so it's going to be Dejon Lee again, situated at his own 35-yard line with space. Goes up the middle, crosses the 50, 
Tackled on the play by Colin Schooler. Go. That's Borgie off the right side and a nice first down. Tough run for Borgie and a gain of seven. Okay. Give me this. Give me uh, trips left, blue flip, blast. Trips left, blue flip, blast. Let's read how it looks. Blue flip, blast. I'm on, ready? Blue flip. Yeah. Go! Hut, hut. So that's a quick shot for a first down go, for Bird. Go. Hey. I think he might be short. I think he had it if he if he stays upfield. So yeah, Joe, you're right. They go, are going to Nike short. push. Go, Cole. Go, Cole. Go, Jumbo. Nike push. All right, so they're bringing in Cole McDonald. Strong big, right, Nike push. Strong right, Nike push. The big running quarterback in their Jumbo package saw this in the first quarter. Shift them. Shift them. That's an there easy first down. There it is. No, uh, Cole, stay in there. Stay in there now. Uh, turbo, turbo, turbo. Cole, stay. Give me trips right, QB bucks. Trips right, QB bucks. Trips right, QB bucks. Okay, line up and roll. McDonald stays in, McDonald keeps it, McDonald has space. And you see the threat that he brings, oh, Donald Payne there. missed Give the tackle. Trio right, red Houston throwback. Trio right, red Houston throwback. Silver's mentioned we were talking to Eric, we need a first down to get things going, right, they got that great first down. Houston throwback. Joey with Let's the... Ray Houston throwback. Who's getting hey, run, the throwback? Make sure you roll to that the right is a really good like question. I'm going to find out the same time Go you do. Go I don't like it. Throw it. How about That was the throwback. All right, that was Brandon, Lee. Go. Brandon, go. Okay. Give me turbo, turbo, turbo. So Silver's back in at quarterback after McDonald came in, got a little, little spark going. It's not going to be second red. and ten. Z5, I don't want ready. Red, red, red. Z5. Let's see it. Red, red. Yeah. Two more stars. Okay, go cat, cat, cat. Go GTFO, GTFO, GTFO. Four seconds. Uh -huh. Shot over the middle. Touchdown, oh. Houston. Cedric Bird. So now they'll go for one point. McDonald in at quarterback. Throwback McDonald. Can't find anybody. Throws it to the back of the end zone. It's going to be tipped and incomplete by Hawkins. Uh, it's difficult, like you said. But uh, when your number's called, you got to perform and make plays. That's football. Appreciate so. you, man. Thank, Thank you, you very much. All right, so the free kick did not get past the 20 yard line. It's a 15 yard penalty assessed from the free kick spot. First down. All right, so again, kicking in this league, if you don't execute, this is the second time we've seen it. Let's bring in Dean Blandino. Walk us through here, Dean, what was just executed. 
Yeah, that was another rule that we put in again to promote the returns. The ball hit just shy of the 20. It has to make the 20-yard line in the air. If not, it's a dead ball foul. And just like a kickoff out of bounds, 15 yards from the spot of the kick. So this time Arlington is the benefit of the good field position. Right up the middle is Keith Ford. And Joey, I... I kind of like what they're doing with kicking in this league because it's putting a priority not only on, on safety with the kick return, but it's putting a priority on returning kicks. Yeah, special teams is huge in this game overall. The, the turnovers by Houston on special teams. And then we've seen two kicking violations that has given the team the ball on the plus 45. There is no rule like that in any other sport that gives the ball to a team plus 45 in a position to make a first down or two and be ready to score. Pressure, ball is out, Houston recovers. Jack Heflin, the big play forced by John Daka. Plitt never felt him coming. And that was just an easy fumble scoop and recovery. And that's what we saw early on from Houston in that first quarter. They're back to the pressure. We've seen them apply last week with the seven sacks against Orlando. As George Moore, the left tackle, he was beat. You were blindside, there's nothing you can do about it. Eric. Coach, you guys were putting adverse field position right there. Come up with a huge turnover. What did you see from your defense? Just effort. Yeah, that's what we want to do. Just play with full effort. Um, and we don't look at it as bad field position. It's just football, right? Go out there, play football. It's recess. Go out there and play ball. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. Bryson Allen. On the carry, Will Clark on the tackle. That's interesting to hear Stewart say that. We don't look at it as field position, we look at it as football. I think you have to in this league because of those rules. You can't let it affect your team. Go! What a play. Flag on the play. It's going to be a horse collar on Willie Taylor. But that was a great individual effort. Take a listen. There is no foul for a horse collar as the quarterback was inside the pocket. Third down. So they call a great individual play stand. Yeah, and I was <laughs> just about to <laughs> talk to my man Dean once again. <laughs> we got to let these quarterbacks play a little football. That was a great play by Taylor. The one hand. You imagine the strength of Taylor. To it was amazing. That, the the strength feet. that it takes to pull Silvers down like that. Hey, trips left up. Blue, five yards on one. Ready? Go. Huh, huh. Third and 15, empty backfield. Silvers has to plant his feet. Had the throw to Burnett. Hawkins on the coverage. Oh, no. Yeah, guys, what was really interesting right there, Matt, to me, it looked like great protection right down here, but he's kind of seeing things. We saw that a little bit last week with these quarterbacks not fully trusting his offensive line. Step in and make that throw. He kind of got his feet a little tangled up, loud feet, wasn't able to make what could have been a massive play. I mean, how is that now? I mean, he literally fucking grabbed my shit. You can't, you can't. There's no horse collar in the pocket, isn't it? All right, so a punt to Killens. Killens runs up and fair catches see that? 23. Fair catch. Come up and catch the ball. Are you going to be happy at all? No, no, I'm happy he came up and caught it. Hey, great ball. Yeah, I had to get it out, but yeah. I mean, that's just fucking. No, we're good. We're good. We're good. No, I mean, it, I kind of just had to. I mean, he's. Is that a dog? Did they talk to him? Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. No, I mean, this is fucking. That was a back play call. No, excuse me. He should have thrown the flag.
Ball at the 22. Drew Plitt and Arlington after. Why are you smiling? Forcing the punt. Joey, I'm a happy guy. You know that about me. <laughs> yeah, I know you I, are. I'm, I'm just happy. I love football. I love access. First and ten for Plitt. Quick shot to the outside. That's monster. We on your left. What? Get your ass out of here. Hey! Whoa! Whoa! This would be tough. It's clearly built up. Yep. <laughs> Keith Ford stretched out. Defense and Ellerby. Great play. Loss of three. So now third and eight. Gun Tempty right south. 83, all go, X Arena, all one, right? Turn it off! Turn it off! Hurry, hurry, Just get the playoff. Plit downfield. No one there. Tried to hit Ford out of the backfield. Jordan Mosley was on the coverage. Another punt for the Renegades. Can't do anything with their defensive I'm not sure if Plitt thought there was a blitz coming, thought there was a pressure coming. Seemed like that ball came out quicker than it needed to. Marquette King, he's had a busy night. Dejon Lee's been back. Sixth punt of the night for King. Lee driven back to his 24. Tries to get to the outside. He's being chased by a number of Renegades players. Joe Powell ends up bringing him down. He saw Brandon Silvers in his touchdown. Let's take a listen to how it sounded. Okay, go cat, 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 go GTFO, 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 four seconds. And that's another difference in this league. The offensive coordinator can talk to the receivers and the quarterback, the entire offense, right up until the snap of the ball. He's calling the hey, play Denver for the quarterback. Ready. Yeah, it never shuts off. No, he can talk the whole time. Some quarterbacks don't like that. Yeah. Go! Uh -huh. Borgie up the middle. Uh, trips left. Uh, it's, it's fine, Tiger. Trips left. Hey, trips left. Trey, trips John left. Trey. Uh, Lion blast. Trips left. Lion blast. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Lion blast. I want ready. Lion, lion. Let's go. Go. Ha ha. <laughs> Draw to Borgie and a good recognition by Will Hill. That was good defense there for no gain, bringing up a third down. What an outstanding play by Will Hill. Went to school in Florida. Great play recognition, like you said, and makes a great one on one tackle. If he didn't make that tackle, it's a big play for Houston. Hey, blue check. I'm on, ready? Blue check. Florida back in 2009 National Championship season. Go! Uh -huh. Third and eight. Quick throw for Silver's back shoulder incomplete. Intended for John Trey Kirkland. Devontae Bosby on the coverage. Bosby had one of the pick sixes a week ago. I mean, they're looking for that shit now. Bruce Porter on the punt for the Rutgers. Hey. Hey, they looking for the. I'm telling you, they looking for the back shoulders every time. They look for the back shoulders every time. That punt is straight up in the air. They're begging for it to go out of bounds, and it does. 
Well, our guys in the booth were singing your praises for that great play recognition. What did you see on that? Uh, it was just a play call. That was it. Uh, Coach Tim up in the booth. We've been practicing all week, and I just executed the play. Thanks, Will. Is Will cold? Boy, he did play ball in Florida. That's true. I mean, it is huge. He's 60 something here right now. He might be a little chilly. All right, fair enough. 17 14 Houston regained the lead minute left minute three left here in the third quarter Matt Barry Joey Galloway Tiffany Blackman Eric McClain you know what I'm saying like <clears throat> did Drew Plitt in this offense get something going toss to the right side and a nice job by Killens to keep his feet Play clock's at 15. Second and seven for Plitt to the outside, and that will be caught short of the first down. Arcanado on the catch. And a gain of six as we tick down to the final seconds here in the third quarter. They won't get a playoff, and that'll do it for a, a chippy third quarter. Plitt under center. The give up the middle. That'll be an easy first down for Smith. The Joey Galloway crowd needs to keep watching because the point total right now is at 31. The game closed at 39. Joey, if you took the point total over, how are you feeling entering the fourth quarter? Well, I was feeling really good entering the second half. Third quarter, not much scoring, not feeling great. If you got Houston minus the four and a half, you again are not feeling great, but there's a lot of football to be played. There's a flag on the play. Too many men on the field on the offense. Five yard penalty, first down. Let's go. 12 hey personnel. guys, I just wanted to give you a quick personnel. injury update. Linebacker for the Renegades, Two Aaron Adeoe. He's doubtful with a shoulder injury, guys. Tiffany, thank you. By the way, I think we just made history on a live television broadcast. An official successfully hit the sky cam with his flag. What we got? What we got? The things you notice. Joey, thank you. That wasn't impressive. Smith off the left side. Now that there's live betting, Vegas is going to be that much fun. More fun with the live betting on XFL games. Incomplete to Lawan Winningham. No. No. So third and 11. Here comes the pressure. Good job by the line. It is tipped and it's intercepted. Space for Davis. Sean Davis, a big interception flag on the play, but Houston with a timely turnover. Receiving team, 16. Return team, 16. Spot, the flag is good. During the return, illegal block in the back. Return team. Number 16, 10-yard penalty, first down, Houston. That was on Tejada. Eric. All right, big dog, we've heard a lot of back and forth, a lot of chirping. You come up with a massive play for your defense. Walk me through it. I'm out here making plays, man. Game ain't over, so it's over. 
We live with them. <laughs> so this for bragging rights. That's right. How, how, how does it feel? I mean, when you got you have guys going back and forth. I saw you talking after the play right before and then to make something like that happen. Man, this is what I do, man. I'm in tune in the game. I've been locked in all week. Trying to showcase that. No doubt. Appreciate you. Sure. So you heard him say there, we live with them. We've been detailing that story throughout the night. They live in the same hotel. They practice at the same spot. They eat at the same spot. They train at the same spot. They're both state of Texas teams. This is one of those XFL early rivalries that's showing itself tonight. But what a play and a timely and interception. Typically, they're friends. Right up until the week that you have to play against that team, that's the week you're not friends. And then after the game, on Monday, right. you go back to being friends. Allegedly. Quick shot out of the backfield. Great individual effort there by Aline to get something. And a gain of four Silvers took another shot. I think it's important for Arlington's defense to get as many shots on Silvers as possible because you right, can purple, see it purple, affects purple, his purple, reads purple. down the field. Right, right, purple. Huh? Right, right, purple. Right. Go! Uh, huck, huck. That's going to make it third and 11. The defender, the defender did not get in the neutral zone. False start. Offense, number 73. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Joey, anything on the offensive line here and a big penalty? Yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear it. What no, you got? I mean, with the rules of the guys trying to react to the other guys, I mean, that, that is a tough situation. I'll say that, Eric. Yeah, well, what I would love to see is, is not go backwards. Reach out and hit that guy. Then you might get your, your penalty you want there. Setting up for pass protection here, third and 11. Uh -huh. Here comes the blitz. Silvers plants that back foot and a shot over the middle of the field. And that'll be a first down, Houston. Ben Putman and a gain of 24. Listen, guys, I'm down here talking with the wide receiver coach saying, hey, what, what do you see? What's going on? They're showing cover two man on one side. They're showing cover three on the other. He said, we've got to hit the bender over the middle. They were waiting on that play. It presented itself right there. Tampa on one, ready? Tampa. Go. There goes Lee. Here we go. Load, check, swing. I want ready. Load, check, swing. Watch out. Go. Uh -huh. Again, pressure. Again, contact. And a good individual effort. One by Silvers, two by Putnam. And it's going to bring up a third and short, third and one after a gain of six. Read the end. Trip right, no. Denver. Read the end. You got to run the Uno to put a fucking touchdown. Watch out, man. So here comes Cole McDonald again on a third and short. Sounds like an RPO. He said, read the end. The end will not be blocked. Read it. Handed it off. And a first down for Borgie. And Joey, it looks like have had he kept that. The entire left side of the field was open. I was going to say that, but I didn't want to say it because it always looks that way. You always think if he would have held the ball, he would have had a big play there. Well, he would have. Yeah, well, yeah. It's easier to say when you're looking at it this way. As he's reading it, and that defensive man is facing him with his shoulders. Don't look at his eyes. Look at his shoulders, and they're facing the quarterback. Quarterbacks tend to think, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off. Really, Taylor totally red run. Nonetheless, still a first down for Houston. McDonald to throw. He had his man beat, was held up just a bit out of the coverage. That was John Trey Kirkland incomplete. Clock will continue to run second and ten. Looks like Kirkland got held on the outside on a double move. That, that's pass interference. That's illegal contact. Bosby put his hand on him after the double move, held him up. 
This is the eighth play of the drive, and it looks the like balls the in the air. The can't be illegal contact. Confirm. Enough contact to pass the pass. Do we have a number? Forty-one. Okay. All right. We'll change it. Okay. Yeah. Houston is challenging, ruling on the field for illegal contact by the defense, number 41. That play is under further review. Jeff, I'm with you. I'm looking at it. First thing we've got, the ball is in the air, so there's no illegal contact. I don't have enough for pass interference, but there's no illegal contact. The ball is in the air when the contact occurs. He reaches but there's not a lot of contact there. So we're going to let the ruling on the field stand. No foul. Correct. Charge the timeout. timeout. Correct. Correct. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Houston is charged its first timeout. Dean, what would have overturned the call of the field? This game. Yeah, well, initially, Houston challenged that this was illegal contact. You can't have illegal contact with the, with the ball in the air. So by rule, there's no illegal contact. And even if they challenge defensive pass interference, there's not enough contact there. There's not enough material restriction to make that defensive pass interference. So charge the timeout again. That's one of the rules in the exit, though. You can challenge anything. Wade Phillips just did, lost the challenge and the timeout. Eric? Coach, it seems like they've been really rough and handsy on the outside. You threw the flag there. They didn't agree with you. What are you seeing? Yeah, well, we said from upstairs he was he was either illegal truck or holding, and we didn't get either one of them. So appreciate you, Coach. What do we got here? We're good from the 34. We're right there, Coach. Oh man. Go. Big third down. Pressure comes. Silver gets it off. It is intercepted. Will Hill was hanging back there, playing center field at safety. Flag on the play, but that is a costly turnover for Silver's in the Roughnecks offense. Legal contact number 28. Five yards, previous spot, automatic first down. Illegal contact. Defense, number 28. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic, first down. And Joey, it's not going to stand. I think this is the same. That's the same grab around the waist on the other side. It's the same call. You have to call that. I think it's the correct call. Anytime you grab a receiver around his waist, anytime a defense back reaches out with their arm and grabs a receiver around the waist, it has to be called. So Silver uh -huh. in the Houston offense negates the turnover, trying to take advantage, lead to the outside. Jamal Carter after one. How about the close of Jamal Carter? That looked like it was going to be a pretty big play. Jamal Carter coming from the safety position, closes down and makes an outstanding tackle in the open field. Now he's fired up. You're fired up about the officiating on the, on the receivers. I'm disappointed in Dean. <laughs> hey, red, 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 red. Yeah, red, red. Go. Uh, hunt. Second and nine. What a great read by Silvers to go back to Putnam. Joey, he stared right. It wasn't there. Came back to the middle of the field. In the yeah, first came game. back to Putnam. And again, Putnam over the middle. This is what Coach said he wanted to look for. Now, I guarantee you Putnam wishes he had another chance at catching this ball and staying on his feet. This could be an easy touchdown. Putnam's going to walk in. But a great read by Silvers getting to his second read, which we haven't seen him do a lot of in this game. That one was perfect. Gain of 18, now first and goal. McDonald back in at quarterback. 11th play of the drive. McDonald keeps it this time. Payne on the tackle after a gain of four. Okay. Give me a, a regular, regular, regular. Cole, stay in. Cole, stay in. Give me, uh, give me, 
Regular strong left nasty H orbit Bronco stare Z glance. Nasty Oof. nasty strong left That's H orbit point. Bronco stare Z glance. In play right now, Houston minus four and a half, and the point total based on the extra point should they score. Give up the middle to Lee, closed again quickly. Nice job by Carter. All of that play call for a run between the tackles lets you know that there's a lot going on in these play calls yes. where you have two yes. options. Yes, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ace left Y on tight Oakland. Ace left Y on tight Oakland. It's Denver Y arc. X orbit return option, here we go. Third and goal. McDonald remains at quarterback. Motion in, give up the middle, touchdown Max for you. No, we're going, uh... Remember an interception was negated with penalty. 13 plays, 70 yards. And it looks as if a two-point conversion. And if you have the over, you don't want a one-point conversion. <laughs> They're going for one, yeah. They... Hey, hey, man, this is when betting gets interesting. The one point will put you at 38, but the number's 39. You have the minus four and a half right now, and you have no one-point conversion after Colin Schooler comes up with the tackle. Two touchdowns, no interceptions. Beauty of the XFL, nine-point game. So a touchdown for Arlington and a three-point conversion ties it. Killens on the kick return. And a big drive here with 4.54 left. Hey, finish it next time. You good? So Drew Plitt, he's thrown a couple of touchdowns tonight, but he's also thrown two interceptions. Joey, what do you like for play calling here? The fact that he's 0 for 10 on throws over 10 yards and has a two interceptions. Oh, you want to be quick. They did a nice job bringing more tight ends in and protect him. He has time in the pocket. Now deliver. That's a good start to the drive to Jordan Smallwood. Slasher, slasher, slasher. All three timeouts for Arlington. Killens trying to get outside, and he avoids the first tackle. Somehow, eventually, you're going to get brought down trying to stay alive in the backfield. There was a host of roughnecks there. That is a loss of 11 with John Daka, the first man there. Well, we've seen Killens make all kind of plays like that when he's at UCF with his speed. This is pro football guys are faster. F sale, X dagger, hook flat. <laughs> Third and 17. Plitt already running. Flag on the play. Plitt brought down by Johnson. Holding, will be declined. Holding offense will be declined. Offense number 55. Penalty to climb. Results of the play. Fourth yeah, down. really, guys, what you just saw right there was a defensive lineman totally dominating, pushing. When you're going backwards and you feel like you're on skates as an offensive lineman, sometimes the best thing is to do two holds so you don't get your quarterback hit. Unfortunately, uh, it was a lot of getting hit right there. What a night by the Houston defensive pass rush. Fifth sack of the night. Fourth and 30, King punting from his own end zone. Lee situated just beyond his own 50. King's got a leg on him, an NFL leg, brought back to the 35 as Lee, trying to make a man miss to the outside. Can't do it, stays up though. Good special teams by the Renegades. A really fun watch. 
So McDonald back in at quarterback for Houston. Arlington, three timeouts, couple first downs in this drive for Houston, and they could all put this one away. McDonald on first down and a gain of two. And there's that first timeout from Stoops. So now could be the final drive for A.J. Smith calling ball plays here if they can get a couple of first downs. Here he was on a couple of big plays for the offense in the third and fourth quarter. Okay, go cat, 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 go GTFO, 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 four seconds. Throw it! There it is, touchdown! Touchdown! Hey, check, check, check this. Red. GTFO, red GTFO. Throw it. Had a baby. Oh, he got it. Whoa. So again, two timeouts remaining for the Renegades. McDonald remains at quarterback. They are content keeping it on the ground with Borgie and company. That's going to be a gain of one. Will Clark on the tackle. Stoops is not going to use his second timeout here on third and seven. Hey, Blue. Chest left up. Blue. GTFO. Home one. Ready? Blue, blue. Blue, blue. Go. Hunt, hunt. <laughs> Over the mat, a big first down for Houston and a good individual effort by Putnam. Gain of 17. I've got Putman for a second half helmet sticker. Yeah, give both of these quarterbacks a lot of credit. Silver's on the sideline for the first two plays, then comes in on third down and long, and you have to make a throw and make a play, and he stands right in the pocket and delivers to Putnam, who has done a terrific job in the slot getting open over the middle. Stay in! Hey, man, punt, baby, let's go. Cole McDonald still at quarterback. Cole McDonald going to keep it at quarterback. Cole McDonald going to ride around at the back of his blocker, which was Garrett Owens. And now Bob Stoops is going to be forced to use all of his timeouts, two remaining. And this will be a second. Donald just, just, I mean, he's a, he's a big guy. He's been, Joey, he's been pivotal tonight for yep. Houston in spots where they've needed it. Two hands on the ball, stay in bounds. They just want to be physical on this drive. And getting eight yards is absolutely perfect. You burn a timeout, and now you're going to need two for a first down. you got to reset your downs, and they only have two timeouts left. Big Monday tomorrow night, final doubleheader. of North Carolina, very much a bubble team taking on Florida State, 7 p.m. Eastern. Big 12, so entertaining. Baylor and Oklahoma State tonight, cap 9 p.m. Eastern, ESPN. It's a beautiful time of year, end of February, March Madness just around the corner. Here's second and two, Arlington, just their final timeout. First down here with all but end it. Borgie up the middle. It depends on the spot, but it looks like they're going to move the chains. And it will be a first down Roughnecks. Roughnecks, first down. Bob Stoops is going to use that. 35 seconds, right? Yeah. We get, we get, yeah. So they just popped it. Yeah, we should be able to run it out. We just have to hold the ball and quarterback sneak for a second. You, you, yeah, I want, I want, we can lay, we can sit down with it. Yeah, you'd like to take a knee? Yeah, take a knee, but take a knee, but take a couple of seconds each time. Uh, minute 35. So we're going to run the ball. So you see Wade Phillips there kind of do the machinations with the, with the math, and he is correct. No more timeouts left for Arlington. They're going to move to 2-0. They're impressive defensively. They still need to get a little bit better on offense. Yeah, they do. And they had just had that sliver of bad 
play in the second quarter. But other than that, this defense has been dominant. The five sacks this week, seven sacks last week. And you know if you play against Houston, you better protect your quarterback because they're coming. And I'll say this, one of the big, most impressive things I've seen out of the Roughnecks tonight, how they balance the two quarterbacks, how they complement each other really well. Yeah, you can do that, especially when you have a lead and you have a defense playing the way their defense played in the second half. Then you can get no. McDonald in the game no, no. and run the football. So while we were doing that, it looks like they spotted the first down, but they have since changed it to third and short. 30 seconds of duration. So Houston used a timeout there. And it looked as if the spot on the field was going to be a first down. And they're marking him short. So this wraps up week two of the XFL. Week three, full slate Saturday. The headliner, our game. 7 p.m. Eastern will be in Las Vegas, Seattle, Sea Dragons, and the Vegas Vipers. That's a look at the Sunday lineup, including the nightcap of the Roughnecks, these undefeated, soon to be undefeated Roughnecks, another all Texas battle, San Antonio Brahma's 8 Eastern on ESPN2. I've said it, I, we were talking pregame on the field. I, the Houston's uniform situation, state of Texas flag under helmet, Roughneck logo, Shades of the old Houston Oilers. I, I, I've got them number one on my uniform power rankings. I don't think I agree. Okay, well, there's a first down. We can agree now that Houston can sit on it. Wait a minute. All right. Big Green is taking first down. Slow, yeah. slow victory. Slow victory. Hey. It's a slow victory. What are we doing? Hurry up. What are we doing? You heard slow victory. That's exactly what that was. Then he said, hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> They're a little too slow. I mean, they coach as coach until the very last snap. 249 yards total offense for Houston. Bob Stoops and his team. Only 107 total yards. They'll fall to one and one on the season. Came back to take the lead at one point, 14-11, but they haven't been able to score since 12 unanswered points. And I'm telling you, and the over looked like a given it at did. one point in this game. It looked like it was a given to I get know. the 39. So Houston covers the four and a half. They move to two and zero. Oh. The under hits with a combined 37. Good coach. Good game. Yeah, you're good. Good job, Wade. All right, thanks. Yeah, really good. Thanks. See you back at the place. That's right. We'll see you tomorrow. All right. Hey, good game. Good job. Come on. Your final score. Houston Rockets 23. Arlington Renegades 14. We want to thank you.